Hi, good morning. My name is Lauren Kato. I work with the Hawaii County Planning Department. Um, I'm the manager for the administrative permit section. So when you submit your building permit, uh, we handle the, currently we handle the intake and we also review for zoning requirements. So we make sure that whatever you're proposing to build uh, complies with the zoning code. Um, this pre presentation will cover those things related to the planning department's review of building permits. Um, the Department of Public Works Building Division will cover the building permit process and building related review items. So <clears throat> what I'd like to cover is plan the planning department's role. Uh, what does the planning department do? And then the planning department's review criteria for building permits, specifically zoning slash use, setback, and height. Okay, so what is the planning department's role? The planning department is charged with um, enforcing um, or implementing Chapter 25, which is the county's zoning code. Now, through the zoning code, there's a number of things that we manage for the county. Um, height and size of structures, density, population locations, um, and a whole bunch of other things. <laughs> the, if you look at the zoning code, it's chock full of different things. But, you know, just generally, this is what the zoning code is meant to do, and the planning department's charged with implementing it. Now, what is zoning? Well, all property in the county has zoning. So, where, wherever you're thinking of buying or relocating or locating, there is a zoning for it. Now, um, zoning governs what is permissible, what, it, what you're allowed to do with on your property. Um, so, <clears throat> if you're, it, without going into fine detail, what you really need to do is get your tax map key number because the TMK number is how we track property. Once we understand where your property is, we can then get your zoning and we can tell you what is, allow what is an allowable use for your property. Um, so you can get your tax map key, if you don't know it, you can search for it by address at the Real Property Tax website, or you can by all means come to the planning department and we'll help you search for it um, real property tax for the Hilo office is right next door. Um, we can take you over there and they can give you more assistance even if you, if we're unable to help you with finding your TMK. However, you, you really do need your TMK in order for us to determine what your zoning is. Dwellings. Now, most people will have either single family residential zoning or agricultural zoning, both of which allow dwellings. However, if you're agriculturally zoned, you are building a farm dwelling. According to state land use law, you are building a farm dwelling. It's not just a dwelling. It's supposed to be in conjunction with the agricultural use of the property. However, in this county, we allow you to have one. Now, so when you come in for your, your farm dwelling application, you will need to sign a uh, a notice letting you know that what you are building is a farm dwelling. Uh, however, single family residential is simply a dwelling and so you have a similar form that you will need to fill out for the single family dwelling notice. Setbacks and yards. Now, a setback is the required clear space between structures and your property line. It's supposed to facilitate light and air. So um, the setback is, is necessary. Now, so your setbacks are determined by your zoning and your property size. So through your TMK, we will be able to know how big your parcel is, what the zoning is, and then we can tell you what your, uh, your setbacks are. Um, it's, it's very hard to generalize because it's very site specific. But this is generally how we determine your setbacks. Now, this is a very simple graphic about what your setbacks are. You have your front setback line, which is usually along the street. That is your right of way. Or 
um, private street. Um, you have the rear setback yard, which is the side opposite the front. Um, and you have two side setbacks. It creates this box, which determines your buildable area within which your buildings have to be within. Um, the other thing, criteria we use is height. Height is managed through your zoning and your use. Um, for instance, a very extreme use, a cell tower. Given so many feet, there is so much, every time it increases in height, there is a consummate increase in the setback. So, um, you know, it's very use specific and also very <laughs> zone specific. So, but in general, for, for a dwelling, this is how we determine height. Basically, average elevation of grade, meaning the floor, or, or the ground in this case, and the midway point to your roof. Now, this is also very construction specific because sometimes you will have an A-frame house, which basically is all roof. <laughs> so you, it, you wouldn't measure to the middle of that, or you could have a flat roof, which is a different thing. Um, you could have mansard, which is basically something that looks like a hip roof, but is actually flat in the middle with, with sloped sides. So there are many variations on this rule. So um, what we will, you would need to do is come to our office and actually at that point we would make a determination on your height. <clears throat> so those things combined give you what we call a, a building envelope. Now, as you can see here, here are your front and your rear setbacks, your side setbacks, your bit maximum height, sorry, and that basically provides the envelope within which most of your structures have to be within. Now, in the previous session, we had a good question. Somebody asked, oh, does that mean my septic tank with the um, bleach field, does it have to also obey the setback? No. In, in, th in that case, because it is not an above ground structure, basically it's below ground, it gets buried. So it is actually part of the average grade <laughs> since it's below ground. So typically your, your leach field, your septic system will not have to meet the setback requirements. But this is, in very general terms, what the planning department re reviews for your building permit. So, what I'd like you to take away from this presentation is you must get your TMK number. Without it, it's very hard to give you accurate, you know, site-specific advice about your particular building situation. Um, please, please come to the planning department and get your information from us regarding what your setbacks are, what your heights are, and what your permitted uses are. There are many professionals out there in the field, but then sometimes they get it wrong. It's often best to just come to the planning department and ask us. We will be really happy to help you with determining what your permitted uses are, you know, your setbacks and your, your height. Um, this is how you can contact us. Um, you can call our main, our main line number. I suggest hitting zero. Talk to the secretary. Let them know what your question is. Then she can direct you to the appropriate planner because it may not ac actually be in my section. What you may be seeking is maybe change of zone or use permit or a special permit or something of that nature. That's a different actually division from mine. So, you can call the main number, let them know what you want to find out, and then they will direct you to the appropriate planners. Or you can come visit us, no problem, Al Puni Center. Um, you know, Monday through Friday, except holidays, 7.45 to 4.30. Um, we do, for West Hawaii, we do not take building permits after lunch on Wednesdays. That is the only limitation. I forgot to mention that in the last presentation. In, in East Hawaii, uh, sorry, West Hawaii, out in Kona, they don't take building permits after lunch on Thursdays. Um, <clears throat> or, by all means, oh sorry, email us 
at planningandhawaii.com, um, we will try and respond back to you as quickly as we can. As you can imagine, we get a lot of emails um, requesting information, but we try to turn the, those around as quickly as possible. But I always encourage you to stop by, come talk to us. We'll always be happy to help you. And that's it. Thank you. Hello everyone, Who? I'm Jessica Andrews and I'm a plan, building plans examiner with Building Division, County of Hawaii, um, Department of Public Works. Here's our, speaking of contact information, there's um, main line for Building Division in East Hawaii and main line in West Hawaii. And um, we are right across the hall from Planning Department in Hilo. That's backwards, but I want to go forwards. Hmm. Sorry, technical <laughs> difficulties. <laughs> Take a little break. <laughs> if you try okay, to advance it, yeah. try to try advance it. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're back. Okay. So, okay, so planning department, you know your land use, you know your zoning, and now at this point you have, say, an idea of what you want to design. Um, so the question is, um, I want to build a new house, or I want to build an addition. Um, that's what you're here to address. How do I obtain a building permit, a residential building permit? So I'm going to um, try to answer that question in a simplified way, um, and I can address any questions afterwards that are more specific or detailed. So I, I tried to break it down into three basic steps. Um, number one is know your site, and that has a lot to do with what Norrin talked about already. Um, or actually, no, I'll back up and go through all three of them. Number two would be work with a design professional to complete your building plans, and three submit your plans to the county to start a permit application. And so going into the first step, know your site. That would be knowing your zoning, your setbacks, um, something about your permit history, especially if you have an existing house and are adding on or altering the existing house, um, your flood zone, and potential CCNRs, that's uh, codes, covenants, and restrictions if you're in a community that has those. Not all do. So for knowing your site, one thing um, that Norrin already referred to is um, research records at real property tax to know something about your permit history, to know your TMK. You can come meet with county and state staff to address any preliminary questions about your site. So the questions that pertain to zoning and setbacks, you would go to planning department. Questions that pertain to grading and flood zone, you would go to engineering division. Uh, questions that pertain to um, individual water system or IWS, Department of Health, and we have Department of Health um, representative here today, Amy Cook. And building division, um, we have, so building, electrical, and plumbing codes are, are all within um, that division, and so any questions that pertain to those codes, you could come and meet with a reviewer or an inspector at building division. And we really do encourage you to address preliminary questions and we, we enjoy meeting with you at the counter because it helps us all to clear up any problems down the line right at the beginning. Number two, work with a design professional to complete your building plans. And a design professional is an architect or a structural engineer. Both can, can stamp your plans, design your plans, and take responsibility for the design thereof. Uh, we really encourage you at that point that you're meeting with your design professional. Establish your expectations. Uh, establish your design goals. Come with your ideas and, and you know, make them known and make sure that your design professional uh, knows the steps to take 
and, and shares with you what those steps are clearly. That's the design professional's responsibility to assist you in that. And as part of that discussion, you could address whether you want to do a couple of two, whether you want to do one of two tracks, and that I'm calling them custom home design or pre-approved package home. And I'll go a little bit into what those two tracks are. Uh, custom home design is really what um, most of our applications are at this point, and it's a customized home design, whether it's a new home or an addition, that meets your specific goals, customized for you, for you, for you. and um, it's the responsibility of the design professional to verify code compliance and to complete the documents that are required for permit approval. And um, make sure that, that, you know, that you're asking questions during that process and that your design professional knows that's their responsibility. And one thing that I should mention on the custom home track is that if you are a lava evacuee, lava, um, if you're affected by the lava, we are expediting plans. Uh, and so be sure to mention that when you submit your permit application for a custom home design. Pre-approved package home is something that's available now, and we currently have 24 home models that are available from 480 square feet to 1,284 square feet. And so that's from about from one bedroom to up to four bedroom um, size homes. And they are what happens with a pre-approved package home is it's pre-approved by building division. So following review by planning engineering and Department of Health, the plans are approved by the building division within 48 hours. And they're expedited by the other agencies, but uh, that's, it's approved by the building division, the structure. And so those plans are available at local housing manufacturers, and actually the vendors are here at this event, and you could go meet with um, the vendors to see the various models. They've got some 3D renderings, and you can ask some more questions about those pre-approved package homes. And there's a binder actually here that I have that's available for viewing, and it's at the building division as well. And so lastly, um, you want to develop an action plan with your, with your design professional, with your design team, to draft and complete all required documents, including your IWS, your catchment tank, your solar variance. So those items are your site. You know, so even if you're doing a pre-approved package home, um, it's, you still have to address the site-specific issues, such as IWS catchment tank and solar variance. And then, got your plans together, submit your plans to the county to start a permit application. And hopefully, approved quickly. <laughs> um, so, who, so once you submit it, it uh, who's going to review it? It's going to be Planning, Engineering, Department of Health, and Building Division. Those four agencies review essentially every residential permit application. So at the building division, if you come visit us, we have some resources available. We also have them available at the um, building um, Department of Public Works table here. Uh, the package home binder, you can view at the building division. I also have it here. The residential permit guidelines is a handout um, that helps to go into more detail about uh, what, what is required for a residential permit and in the plans themselves. The residential building permit checklist is a really good tool to use, say, with your design professional um, or, or, you know, with your, um, your family, even going through kind of the checklist of what you need to gather together to complete your, your building plan set. The residential, sorry, the building permit worksheet is a one-page document that you would fill out and bring in when you actually submit your plans, so it's the, the information that you would give to the clerk. <coughs> And then um, individual assistance with any of those items. Um, we're glad to sit down with you at the counter and answer specific questions. This is what the permit checklist looks like. So there's, you know, kind of, um, actually I have a copy here that I can hand out, but it helps you kind of to um, go down and check off those boxes to make sure you've completed everything prior to submittal. And then this is what the worksheet looks like. Um, that you would actually, and you, this, you can download this and fill this out online and then bring it in when you submit your application 
and it'll make things speedy when you actually come in to submit. And there's our contact information again, and we're, uh, we're available for questions now. So, does anybody have any questions? What is solar variance? So that would be if you, um, state law mandates that you need to put solar panels on your house for a solar water heater. If you want to obtain a variance, you can apply through DBEDT, the state agency, to obtain a variance. You want to have that we, at the county, can't actually issue a building permit until we have either one of those two, the solar panels or a solar variance. 